Silent foosball. Quiet on the set. Roll it. Rolling. Slate it. Slate it. All right, I'll cue, I'll cue you, Lindsay. Uh, okay, here we go. Start your move. Lindsay? I mean, he stuck it in her area, threw it for the cash and prizes. Yeah, and so she like spun around and was like, what the fuck? Door! And then she was like, oh my god, you're blind! Ew. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, first party of the year. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Rocky lives here? Yeah, his parents won the lottery. Moved to Florida. Hey, it's so rough. You gonna hook up with that Molly chick tonight? I kinda called her Amanda. <laughs> so she's pissed at you, huh? I don't know. Probably. I haven't seen her since it happened this afternoon. Sounds like you had a hard day. <laughs> but wait a minute. You gotta tell me. Did your dad actually see it going down? What the hell did I say? Put that in the fridge. God. Oh, fucking hell, I didn't realize we were going through the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't really, uh... Oh. You alright? Yeah, I just did not know we were going yeah. that long. It's basically about three guys um, and their troubles with women and their friendship and, and this Rocky character that kind of, I guess, steals the whole show. Um, so that's pretty much what it's about. It's a big party, lots of fun. Uh, Lindsay, without telling me, she went ahead and worked on this script. And right after the new year, she just dropped uh, this into my lap. It was about uh, 13 pages at the time. Uh, it had some really solid characters, so we just started, we started uh, developing from there. I thought it was a really great project. I told her I wanted to do it for my next semester and make it really big. So we added a lot of a big cast of characters. We uh, Wrapped up each guy's story, gave them a problem, kind of gave them a character arc. I play a guy named Marco, and I'm this character who tries so hard to like conform to be like, think I'm cool like everybody else, and I'm trying so hard to be like someone who I'm completely not. And then throughout the movie, you see me gradually changing into becoming my own person. My character's name is Sarah, and I am one of the friends of one of the main girls, Molly who is dealing with pro guy problems. So I'm kind of there supporting her, the guy. Action. No, really, tanning is like my biggest downfall. Please, how often can you possibly tan? Constantly. I'm like a total tanaholic. Hey, Heather, what would you say my biggest addiction is? Um, I don't know. Coke? My role in this film is Druggy Girl, and um, I got involved with this production because uh, I've known Richie for about a year and Lindsay for a short period of time, and they just asked me to come and help out and come and be in the cast. Um, Richie's in my field production class at Austin Community College and pretty much hired me because I knew what I was doing and owned my own camera. Didn't want to use the cameras from school. It's a general party look. Kind of not too much like your everyday party film, but something relatively organic and unique, but not studio look or too cold. Generally a warm film. So we wanted to have uh, the whole house lit so we could just kind of pick up and move, not have to bring our three point lighting set up and change it for every little thing. Just really adjust the lights to where we need to be to, to move faster. That's why. Uh, we're using so many lights and blowing breakers and losing entire circuits and uh, we were losing the Christmas lights that decorate the living room. They were actually blowing out on us. I was blowing fuses every 10 minutes, but I had to get the shot, so oh well. <laughs> I know a couple, a couple things went off. Are they back on? No, they're not. They're still out out here. Oh, they don't have anything plugged in. Okay, try it now because I, I reset them. The location for this production is actually my, uh, my home here with my parents. One, I'm responsible for everything, but two, I know where everything is. So uh, this location would give me as much pre-production as I wanted. Uh, I could sleep on set because my bedroom is just you know, two steps that way. 
uh, and I could have my my run of everything. I could scratch the walls if I wanted. I, <laughs> I could put up posters, holes in the walls, and keep it like this, keep continuity uh, for as long as I needed with, with the support from, from my parents. So that's why I chose this place. I can beat it up and still be okay. It's progressively slipping. It takes a gigantic gallon wrench that none of us have. Where? Yeah. Can you get that on there? Not that size. Hang on, let me check the Jeep. I got two walks. It's a small area, but it's very tall, which enables me to be able to use the jib to be able to get up there and showcase some of the more creative lighting that we're using with the, the Christmas lights and the Chinese lanterns and everything. And that way we can also kind of get just like a bird's eye view of the whole party and just create a very nice flowing feel for the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's the one. Well, I mean, I can try it. I never, I try not to ever undermine the director like in front of anybody or, I mean, or, you know, give advice because I don't want it to sound like I'm directing or anything like that because I'm not. Sometimes at the end of the day, we'll talk about stuff that could have gone better or could have gone worse. And sometimes I just let them figure it out for themselves because I, you know, when I shot back when I was in their place several years ago, I uh, kind of had to learn on my own, so I do both. Well, Nate's kind of less of a TA, more of a friend for us. He, uh, he, he definitely knows his stuff, which is why he is the TA, but I don't think he really looks at himself as, as a teacher or anything. He just, he, he wants to crew, so he's part of the crew instead of somebody that's representing the school. Okay, here we go, and put them on. What did I do? Put that in the fridge. Oh my God, where have hey. you been? <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Brian and I were discussing the logistics of turning my Statue of Liberty figurine into a bomb. There's always something with you. <laughs> Hopefully, this will have a, enough of a production value to be something that people will talk about. Uh, it's not going to get me to Hollywood or anything, uh, but it'll take me definitely three steps instead of two uh, closer to the Austin film community. I read about the big inspirations like Richard Linklater's from here, Robert Rodriguez uh, did UT here, and this is kind of his home now. And Austin is the, uh, the hotbed of uh, rising independent film so it's something I'm very eager to get into I want to um, taste that it's something that's so close <laughs> yet it seems to be I've been doing productions for a while uh, in a row uh, that I finally have a few under my belt that I can put on a reel and start shipping out and uh, talking to those people